All right, what's up? What's up? What's up, my friends, my family, my fellow gamers? Your boy Porter Rock seventy seven, your only friend in these YouTube streets. Coming back at you right now with a live stream. Let's roll this going. Let's get let's roll this going. Let's get this rolling. Um, what up, everybody? What's up, chat? How the stream look? Sounding good. The levels is good. The levels is good. Let me know as we booting this up. Haven't talked to you guys maybe for about what, a little over a week now. I'm getting ready to. Yeah, like within what? We're in the last week of February. Tomorrow's the last day, right? So I pretty much just got the month of March, the, the month of March as my last month here in Germany. I head out to California early April. And then a while it's going to take me a while to settle in, you know, get an apartment, you know, get my new place there with me and my wife. Um, I own a house, but it's in North Carolina. Still own it. You know, I got, you know, uh, but I didn't get orders back to North Carolina. I got orders to California, which is pretty cool. I've never been stationed in San Diego area. Uh, I got stationed in an area called 29 Palms. Which is trash. That area is like in the desert. So I lived there twice, but like only a year. Thank God. Uh, but now I'm going to live in a good part of California. So I'm looking forward to it. Living in, in that area of California for the first time. Uh, so the good part is living, going back to the States. Now I could have... Because uh, uh, majority of my audience is the American audience. Looking at the metrics in Google. Um, I have a few people in Europe, not too many though, and I can understand why it's really challenging um, to create content for the European audience. It's like it's rough being six hours ahead, um, especially for shows, E3, all that stuff. It's crazy. Um, like, yo, Stevens, what's up? Semper Fi. Um, but the good part is back to California now. Uh, I'm going to do consistent podcasts. Uh, I'm going to get me a, a good PC. As you know, a lot of you know that I would not be getting the Xbox Series X. I'm going to go, you know, with PC as a secondary platform because it's more advantageous. You know, besides the gaming portion, you know, uh, um, we'll start doing professional level, you know, really good video editing quality and stuff like that and better podcast presentation. Uh, you know, I'll do a channel update once I'm settled in in uh, California. And uh, not too much changes. I'm not doing anything. And don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to do any weird stuff like Patreons or what. Not saying that that's weird, but uh, just not my thing. It's still going to be the channel is not going to change uh, in terms of monetization or any weird stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about that. And I, I just like I want everybody get the same content and everybody just show up and rock out. Right. We're going to grow the fan base that way. Right. Um, I'm not using this as a career move or any weird stuff like that. Uh, but I will, and I'll give you a little taste. I will align this channel a little bit more with Twitter. So like Twitter and my YouTube, even though they're both my social media platforms as Porter Rock, uh, but I kept them separate. So I use Twitter more for the crumb side, trash talking, you know, throwing jabs, just shit talking, all that stuff. Um, and then the YouTube side, was the serious conversation, but I normally do, you know, no fanboy, just straight up knowledge and facts and present facts. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to treat the Twitter like that too. You know what I'm saying? Um, so eventually I'm going to cut out the fat. The thing that sucks about that is Twitter is kind of plagued with a lot of crumb side and a lot of idiots, right? Um, so they always bring conversation to the bottom, to the to the lowest point of gaming, right? You can't really have good on this conversation on Twitter because it's just too many. Between the trolls and the idiots, that's pretty much 85% of the gaming community, right? You got trolls and idiots, right? The other 15%, right, that can't have the conversation don't. And the ones that do, they're few and far between, right? So it's just pretty much... A cesspool of just stupidity. So that's why I know most of the time I just troll and talk shit because at least have fun with it, right? But if I'm going to align that with my channel, you know, it's going to be aligned right, which is going to cause, I would just say, 
you know, I have to avoid the nonsense. You understand? In order to keep the two channels aligned. That's how I kept YouTube. You know, you don't see me constantly make fanboy videos or shit talking videos because that's not what the channel's about. So that's what's gonna be um I know people be like, nah, I keep trolling, but after a while, bro, it gets old. You know what I'm saying? It does get old. Um and it just seems like I'll be honest. It seems like there's more idiots now than ever. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna talk about that. Like the, the what really tipped the scale for me, I'll be honest, what really tipped the scale for me was the coronavirus. And and, and we'll talk about that. Um that really right there, like like there's no hope, you know. You know, God needs to come with the next flood and just wipe the planet and start all over. Cause at that point, you know, <laughs> it's just it's just it got it, it that, that that point just got out of hand. And I realized the the stupidity is just growing. It's not being scaled back, you know. It, it, it's crazy, whatever. But let me look through the chat. Let me give you a shout out, man. Uh, pretty uh, logical nonsense. I do huegos. What's up, infamous? What's good? Uh, what else we got here? Uh, J Zero. What's up, dark pink? Absolute MMA. Nomad. Um, shout out the ghost. SS Nine. What's up? Um, the Batosai. I hope I said your name correctly, but thank you so much for showing up. Heath Stevens, what's up? Uh, Hef Semper Fi. Uh, I was stationed in Camp Courtney, Okinawa. I was stationed there too. Yeah, I was stationed in Camp Courtney. I was stationed in Okinawa too. Um, I worked on Hanson, so I lived in Courtney, and I also worked in Schwab. So, you know, that was a drive and a half. Spider 13, what's up? Call me Jay, RB. Uh, well, I'm not in the U.S. yet, but hell yeah, I'll be back soon. Deep 1985 was good. Uh, what we got? Muzi, Muzi, great, you know. Um, Rodriguez, what's up? PS5 Pro Rumors back. Uh, we're gonna talk about that too, right? <laughs> oh man, games, you know, MTH games. Um, uh, they're saying that on March there, there may be some revelation. I don't doubt Rockstar could jump off already, kind of saying something. Tickle he pickle, Eon 8. South Sudan, what's good? North Africa, damn, what's up, man? I'm global. Now, nah, yeah, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Cheeks the Freak, what's up? Uh, Luke's Blade, was good? Uh, who else we got here? You know, hit the like button, right? Robert Brown, welcome, man. Support gaming always. Uh, the Baltai, the I hope I pronounced your name, Baltai. All right, follow out Super Chat. Is Xbox leading next gen? Should Sony feel pressure to get news out too soon? And how coronavirus is going to affect the availability of consoles? Great questions. And that's what this podcast is all about. And I will specifically address that. So if you're a PlayStation fan, right, you definitely want to listen to me here. Okay. Awesome questions. I am answering both. You pretty much came to the right podcast. Thank you so much for that super chat. You're gonna get the answers right there. All right, two face was good. Pre rock chilling. Sam Ash, what's up? And J Zero, what's up? All right, I got 63 people views, 27 likes. If you don't mind, please uh, hit the like button and then also retweet this out uh, to your favorite social media platform and let the people know within your platform that hey, if you're a PlayStation fan, Puerto Rock is live. If you're a fan of PlayStation and you want to, you know, talk about the PlayStation 5 reveal and know the truth behind it. And stuff like that, especially with that super chat question that was asked, you definitely want them to join and be part of the conversation, be part of the chat, because we're going to cover that down like that. But anyway, once again, I appreciate all you guys rocking out with me, taking your time. You could be doing a million things right now, but you're here rocking out with me, all right? And I won't let you down, all right? Gamer boy, chilling, life is good, you know, we keep it gaming, getting ready to move to California, and awesome, and awesome. Professor, do you think Sony's worried about the corona and that's why they have said nothing or they wait until The Last of Us 2 is out? All those questions will be answered. Everything will be answered. You guys, I'm glad you have these great questions. I'm glad you have these great um, concerns, right? So I'm going to answer them. Absolute MMA with the dollar super chat for the support. Good looking out. Thank you so much, right? So we're going to kick, kick it. We got 70 you viewers right here, right? So we're going to kick it because I don't want to prolong and just linger around, right? Let's, let's, let's dial this back, all right? The terms concern, lack of confidence, 
something's wrong. Something's not wrong with PlayStation 5. Something's not right with Sony. Why are they acting this way? This is not how they usually act. Majority of all these terms and narratives are not coming from PlayStation fans. They're not coming from the PlayStation um, enthusiasts and gamers who prefer PlayStation as their favorite platform. They are primarily coming from Microsoft fanboys, Microsoft loyalists, or people who really like Microsoft. Because all these questions give the appearance of PlayStation 5 looking bad. And if PlayStation 5 looks bad, then that means Xbox Series X looks good because that's the competing console. And that's all these conversations is, right? And these conversations are being dominated so much within that community, the Microsoft community, the Xbox community, that it seems like it is um, the topic for everybody, right? You don't know how many times I've seen from somebody who prefers Xbox say, oh, Sony's treating their fans like crap, they're keeping quiet, disrespectful, that a lot, this company's gone to trash. And I'm thinking, whoa, 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 who are you? To speak on behalf of the PlayStation community, especially when I look at your PSN ID, you don't play no games on PlayStation. So what do you know? You know, some of these guys don't even own a PlayStation console. And the ones that do, they hardly play it. And it isn't because of lack of games. Let's all be honest. Because now these guys are playing Yakuza Zero. Because it's on Xbox. Never mind that game's been on PlayStation for how long? And on top of that, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you got the spinoff, which was a big hit, Judgment. Nah, never looked at those games, not even once. Despite owning the console, and the main reason why you own it, oh, I play for the exclusives. Well, you have a lot of exclusives to play, never looked at it. But as soon as it hits Xbox, oh, now you're going to play it. So no, you don't speak on our behalf at all, okay? You don't. You guys don't even speak well on your own platform. You guys aren't even consistent on your own platform, right? Because when you first bought the Xbox One, it was because of the exclusive, because of the big AAA games. Then it went from that, oh, we got Xbox One, it's because of the power. And then it went from that to, oh, no Game Pass, you know, I don't buy a lot of games. Well, if you don't buy a lot of games, why the hell you been talking about gaming for the last six years then? You guys don't even represent your own brand we're not listening to you. So as far as Xbox goes, we're going to leave it with that. They don't talk on our behalf. You hardly play PlayStation. We don't care. Oh, I own every place. We don't care what you bought. Do you use it? Do you play it? The quality games that come out on the platform, do you go out of your way to be like, let me play these games? That's, that's what makes you a PlayStation gamer, right? Just looking at the chat and stuff, all right? So that's the reality. So this narrative about lacking confidence, all that stuff is coming from them. It ain't coming from the PlayStation community. Because a lot of us, right? A lot of us, believe it or not, in fact, if you talk to the majority, we're cool with, hey, we could wait for some information because we know one thing, information is going to come out before November, right? Sylvia Lehman, thank you so much for the super chat. Truly appreciate it. Uh, uh, thank you so much and welcome to the channel. I really appreciate the super chat. Um, Thank you for the support. I wish you had a question, but maybe I'm going to address it anyway, right? The PlayStation 5 comes out in November. That's a fact. Well, you know, they say holiday, right? Holiday 2020, minus the coronavirus, and we'll talk a little bit about that. If all things goes all well, if everything goes well, you will have the PlayStation 5 release holiday 2020, and usually that means November, because November is the biggest month of sales for gaming. So that's usually the target date, right? But it could shift to October, right? We may want to launch in October, right? So they have more times to manufacture more consoles for November, December. That's possible. But that's the window, right? By the time the console is available during that period, we're going to have all the information about the PlayStation 5. So whether we got the information today or we get the information in June, it doesn't matter because it's all before November. It's all before holiday 2020, all right? That's the reality. We PlayStation Nation know this. 
right? We know that regardless when PlayStation releases the information, it's going to be before November. So what do we do until then? We play all these games that are coming out. Like in two weeks, I'm going to be playing Neo 2. Eventually, you're going to get Iron Man. Then you're going to get the big gun, The Last of Us. Then in the summer, goes to Tsushima. Then you're going to get some of the multiplats in between, like Cyberpunk and all that. Avengers. There is a lot of content, right, that is coming out. The IOMR Spartan God, que lo que mani, Xbox no tiene juego, está muerto. <laughs> My man said, hey, what's up, brother? Um, Xbox has no games, it's dead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're happy to make Independence Day. I know it was yesterday, right? Okay? PlayStation Nation knows this. All that narrative about lack of confidence... Something's going wrong. All this stuff is coming from a community that's trying to support their brand, that's trying to do non-profit work to make their brand look good. They've done this tactic for years. In fact, that was one of the reasons how I ended up doing a channel. One of the reasons, you know, you know, it's because of so much misinformation about that stuff. They always take irrelevant stuff that doesn't mean anything and they formulate it into this conspiracy theory, right? Look at the recent coronavirus, right? Sony dropped out of PAX East. They were the first one to announce they dropped out of PAX East, right? Makes sense, right? There's a, a global pandemic that's happening. Companies are worried about a couple of things. One, their workers. And number two, if anything happens, can they be held liable for this sickness? You know, because if Sony tells their workers, no, you going to PAX East, right? And the worker goes, okay, I'm going. And that worker gets sick, Sony's liable for their workers. For putting them in a bad position, right? They were the first ones to do it, right? And instead of people being like, you know what? Hey, this might be a problem. We'll see how it plays out. No. Fanboyism came out. Non-profit work came out. Sony's scared. They have nothing to show. They're broke. Like, what the hell? Like, why would you even want to say that, right? What happened a few days later? You know, Square Enix dropped out. The PUBG dev dropped out. You know what I'm saying? Activision dropped out. All of a sudden, people started dropping out out of these shows. All you had to do was wait a couple of days. Not even. I think within the next day, people were dropping out. Sleepy Lights. Thank you for the super chat. If PS5 keeps getting JRPGs, I don't care about power. Then you're good. PlayStation 5 will keep getting JRPGs. That's a fact. That's a fact. Right? So it's with all that nonsense. Do you have any guess on why Sony has is, is been too quiet? Do you think they're waiting for Microsoft? No, I'm going to answer that. Juego, right? We're going to get all that on right? But let me do this background work. So with this, all this nonsense, it is clear that every conversation from that group of gamers is going to be negative to make their brand look good, right? So let's, let's get that out the way, right? So now let's talk about PlayStation. Let's talk about the message, all right? Understand, right? PlayStation guys, because of hearing of hearing words and conversation from that community, you guys are confusing the merit of the conversation or the merit of the message with the timing of the message, right? The timing of the message doesn't matter as much as <clears throat> what the content of the message is that is what Sony needs to focus on right it is better to release a great message later than a bad message now right the lack of reveal or message whatever has nothing to do with Microsoft and I don't know how well I know how because I, I just said it where it came from right the reveal the message is all dependent on what Sony wants to display as part of their message, right? If part of their reveal, and if you look back at their, all their reveals, a lot of times their reveals included some samples of games, whether it's a trailer, a quick demo, you know, they always said, hey, this is the place, even like everybody talks about um, the February reveal of 2013 with PlayStation 4, right? And people are like, oh, yeah, look, it, remember they did a reveal, you know, so maybe we'll get a reveal this February because they did a reveal last February, which doesn't make sense, right? But that's the logic they use, right? 
But in that review, they show games, right? So how about the reason why, a possible reason why we haven't got a review ready is because they don't have a demo ready. Because the, the developers have to make the demo. The developers have to have the trailers ready, you know? If Sony wants to reveal and games to be part, you know, if, if Sony doesn't just simply want a spec show, like, hey, this is PlayStation 5, these are the specs, thank you, good night, right? If they want something more than that, if they want to show actionable examples of what they're trying to do, then that takes a developer to build products, whether it's build a demo, build a quick demonstration, have a couple of trailers of in-game content, you know, in-game, not just a CGI, but a running real time on the system, right? The developers are part of the reveal. Roger, Microsoft is scared for Google Stadia GDC. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, right? The reveal, right? And all the things it takes to put that reveal comes into play. What does Sony want to do? What type of messages? What products they want to have, you know? Sure, if it was just simply a spec review of just specs, they don't even need a show. They could have just done an article or do a thing like Microsoft did and just release numbers, and then that's it, right? But what if Sony wants to do a little bit more than that, you know? And if you look at Sony's traditional way of reveals, it's not just simply throw out numbers and say, have a nice day. They always associate examples, you know, because they use the games as an example of what the numbers mean, you know, especially, and I promise you, right? It's one of the big things Sony, I ain't, well, I shouldn't use the word promise. In my opinion, one of the big things Sony is going to want to demonstrate is the SSD. I think that's going to be a huge part of that demonstration, right? Part of that reveal. But I don't think they just want to just say it. They're going to want to show it to you. Right? And I would not be surprised if, um, and I and I showed this a couple of times on my cha channel, um, Sony had a, a indoor closed demonstration of Spider-Man. One that was running on PS4 Pro and one that was running on a PS5 dev kit made for the SSD. And they showed the huge difference between the two. I would not be surprised if they did that live for the public. You know, instead of just saying, hey, we got an SSD, it's fast. Like Microsoft did. Sony's going to be like, hey, we got SSD. Let's show some demos. Let's show it to you. Let, you know, because all we got is just words and talking points on how great SSD. But unless you had access to that little um, demonstration, closed door demonstration that's leaked, wasn't even an official presentation, it was a leak, and it was a little small screen, we really didn't have anything on what SSD is going to do. Everything that we've seen is stuff that we have to imagine. You know, and we see the numbers, oh, seven gigabits per second, da, da, da. yeah, sure, it sounds nice, but can we see it? Can we look at it? Show us. Show us games built for the SSD, and let's see on a HDD you know, uh, hard drive, right? Show us the difference. Show it to us. Don't tell us on paper on a written note on a magazine. We want to see it, right? So Sony's reveal, right, you guys may have to take into account what do they want to present to us, right? They also have the controller with trigger pressure sensitive resistance, haptic feedback, confirmed 3D audio, new 3D audio for the, for the platform. These are all things that during the console reveal, Sony has the ability to unveil and show. And if they want to demonstrate these capabilities, right? You're talking about different sectors of their Sony to include maybe third party on who's ready to show it. So the date of the reveal has to take into account the games and the processes and the features, you know? Like, for example, let's say a third party dev is going to be at the reveal, right? That's going to use, you know, the haptic controller and the pressure triggers, you know, triggers phenomenally, right? And they ask that developer, hey, what? You can have a demo of that. Oh, we won't be ready till at least March 1st. Well, clearly you're not going to have a show in February if that developer's not ready, you know? And then you talk to, let's say, a Sony studio. Let's say I'm making it up. Gorilla has SOCOM. Making it up, right? Let's pretend. They got SOCOM. Cool. Yo, is it running on SSD? No load times? Yeah, it's going to do that. When are you going to be ready? Oh, we won't be ready till March 17th. All right? So now you got to go beyond that. Any demonstration, any capability that they want to show 
right? They have to go by when can these be ready. Based on all that information is when they could determine, hey, we can have a reveal depending on the pieces they want to demonstrate. And those are the things that impact reveal. It isn't Microsoft. Microsoft, listen, the consoles are done. There's no change in them. One company doesn't go by the other company with price or whatever. The consoles are pretty much done, right? In fact, at this point, eventually the consoles have to be ready to the point that a prototype, a final prototype, for example, in the U.S. has to be delivered to the U.S. F you know, federal you know, FCC, you know, to get approval to sell in the U.S. You know, FCC will then inspect, test, make sure it doesn't interfere with anything. They need FCC certification. So they're going to have to deliver a final product to the FCC. So all of that is already, you know, is pretty much done. What's done is done. There's not going to be no huge changes, right? Now, they might have two different models because that's what Sony sometimes do. You know, they did it with the PlayStation 4. They had two different unique models of PlayStation and they presented it to the developers and the developers chose the one we currently use. So that's what it is, right? Okay. What's important is the message Sony needs to send out. That's it. It's not when the message comes out. It's when it does come out, what are you telling us? Now, I'm not going to pretend that I speak for 100% of the PlayStation fan base. I'm speaking for myself, but I think many of us agree. All right? Some of the things we want to see Sony does reveal the PlayStation 5. Obviously, the specs. Right, just get it out the way. What the architecture is, what they're doing, and how does it help? An explanation of how it's going to help make games great for the first party studio and the third party studio. Number two, explain the new capabilities of PlayStation 5 beyond the specs. You got a new controller. How is the new controller going to make gaming more immersive? Talk to us about this haptic feedback. How is it different than the Roman controller that we have now? You know, pressure trigger sensitive. How does that work? You know, can you adjust it? Whatever. Give us all the info. That one, right? 3D audio. What's that about? Is it exclusive to just PlayStation headsets? Or is third party going to be allowed to use the same technology? For the people who like to use Astros and all these other headsets. How does that work? How does it make the game better? How is it different as compared to the virtual or to what's that called? Um, uh, what's that other audio? What, uh, man, that Xbox One X has. Um, I'm having a brain fart. Come on, chat, help me out. Dolby. Oh my God. I'm having a brain fart here. Dolby Atmos. Thank you very much, Brian God, right? How is it different than Dolby Atmos? Like, why didn't you just use Dolby Atmos? Are you going to have Dolby Atmos as an optional choice, you know? What's the next generation social uh, media application? You know, you have the share button. How are you taking that to the next level, right? In terms of sharing, you know, um, 4K sharing, all that stuff. For media influencers, for streaming and stuff like that, you know? All of that stuff, Right? Give us the, all the new things, right? And then finally, or, or not finally, then show us the games. Obviously, you're not going to show every game, but give us a sample. Give us a little teaser. You know? For the racing fans, PlayStation great, and Gran Turismo has been synonymous since day one, right? Optical Envy. Thank you for the super chat. Love your content. Keep doing what you're doing, homie. I truly appreciate it, right? Thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the support. And I hope you're enjoying the conversation right now, right? Show us the games. Show us Gran Turismo. You know, a lot of Gran Turismo fans, right? Is a Guerrilla Project ready? Show us some third party. Have the third party explain how these new features with the controller, 3D audio, and the specs are, are helping them make great games, right? That should be part of the video. And then finally, right, what is the plan for next generation. I don't want to know the plan 20 years from now. Don't talk about 35 and cloud streaming and all that. I want to know 2020 to 2027. The seven years of the ninth generation of gaming. What are you doing, Sony? Are you going to go anywhere? 
Are you going to put all your games on PC? Are you going to expand PS Now to phones? What are you doing, right? You need to tell us that. My recommendation, and again, me not having access to board members, to stock owners, to the CEO of Sony, who's in charge of PlayStation, who's the big boss, his vision. Absent from me knowing any of that, I only rely on what I know. I only know what I know, right? And what I know is the PlayStation console brand from PlayStation 1 all the way up to now has been overall the most successful brand in gaming, period. Nintendo, Atari, Xbox, Sega, none has been able to do it better. Even when Sony screws up, they find a way to salvage PlayStation 3, over 80 million in the billion games sold. So they still find a way to make an outstanding product. And if you look back at the PlayStation 3, with all the issues it had, launching at $600, focusing on Blu-ray movies, a sales processor that the industry did not accept, right? Low sales. They still came out with amazing games. Uncharted, The Last of Us, Infamous, Demon Souls, which started the Souls craze. A lot of great content from that platform, right? Regardless of how bad the console started out, Sony focused on the games, right? Okay. So with that, I think it's safe to say their message should still be about the PlayStation 5, right? With their first party studio, they should focus their effort on just making one platform, games for that platform. Not turn them into multi plat studios where they make games for PC. That's your first party studio. You are selling a console. They need to focus on a console, right? Let third party do their whole multi plat thing. That's fine. That's what third party are for. But I think I could speak on most of the reveal. I mean, not the reveal, but for most PlayStation fans, that's what we expect because that's what we always enjoyed about PlayStation. And not just to say, you know, we enjoy exclusives just to talk trash. No. There's a meaning behind the exclusive, you know, it's the fundamental idea that there is a developer studio that is not concerned about any other platform that is not influenced by the audience of other platforms and that they are doing their best to make the best possible games on this one specific for this one specific platform for the company they work for. That is why PlayStation Nation enjoys exclusive because there is a meaning behind it. It's not just simply, ah, I got a game that you don't. There's no such thing. In fact, PlayStation Nation has no game that other people don't because other people could go buy a PlayStation. No one is locking out these games from you. Nobody on PlayStation Nation is telling somebody you can't play The Last of Us 2. You have the ability to go buy a PlayStation console and play The Last of Us 2 if you want to play it. Everyone does. No one's being held back. Sleepy lights. All right, about to head to work. Good luck. I'm out. Make that money. That PlayStation 5 has got to come soon. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right? Hope you um catch, catch up to the recording. So these terms of gatekeeping, locking games out from people, no. It's not like... PlayStation Nations acting like the 300 where we're Spartans in front of Best Buy with our shields. You know, we're not out there going, who, who, you know, we're not, not out there screaming, this is Sparta. No one's doing that. Get your ass to the store, buy a console and play it. N no one cares, right? And you can't say, oh, the money, whatever. The console's like $200. If you go to Black Friday, be down to like maybe 200 150 and get a 50 dollar target card whatever the consoles are cheap no one's no one's gatekeeping anything all right but the exclusive conversation for playstation nation is that these developers are focused on the platform they are focused on the core fan base of playstation and they're trying to deliver the best product for the group that plays on playstation that is it you know when we buy a PlayStation 5 come November, we don't care about phones. We don't care about PC. If we talk about PC, it's the merit of that platform on its own. If we talk about phones, it's on the merit of the phone itself. 
when we buy a PlayStation 5, we're not even going to worry about if the games are still going to be playable on PlayStation 4. Why would any of us even ask that question? We don't care. It's like Stephen A. Smith, you know, you see the meme? Hey, I'm going to say right now, who we don't care. We don't care. Is any of you going to care about the PlayStation 4 when you out there buying the PlayStation 5? No. Doesn't mean anything. Right? For the PlayStation fans, right? The content and merit of the message is what should be important to us, not the fact that oh, Microsoft says something, so you should say something now. No, they don't, they don't have to say nothing now, right? What they need to say is what they should say, right? Not when they should say it, right? Do the reveal that you want to do and display it the way you want to do it. I, with a PlayStation 5 reveal, would like to see the full gambit. The specs, how the console looks, some actual games, explain how the PlayStation 5 brings next generation gaming and show it to us, show us the magic behind the SSD. Let's see that new controller. Let's see some third party confirm and let them talk about how PlayStation 5 is bringing great gaming and help and have the tools so they can deliver great games. Show us how PSN is going to get better because yes, I do expect an upgrade to PlayStation Network. You know, faster downloads, you know, uh, a more intuitive store, you know, things like that. The social media aspects behind it. Explain how expendable memory works because that's a huge question we have. If you got one terabyte of SSD, one terabyte is not going to be a lot of space eventually, right? What type of hard drives would do you recommend or externals do you recommend to expand? Or are you going to create your own unique brand and stuff that we can only buy? We need, we need answers on that. How much is the controller going to cost? What is the price of the console? Because you know what's funny? Microsoft release specs, but we don't know how much it cost, Right? Don't half-ass the reveal. Give us a nice, fully fledged, fully fleshed out reveal. Right? That's I think is what PlayStation PlayStation Nation really wants. Don't piece part. Oh, we're just gonna send you a little bit of specs. No, have a reveal. Whatever method you want, could be all digital, like kind of like state of play, but maybe thirty minutes to an hour. Right? Doesn't matter where the location. Maybe you don't even have to have an audience. It doesn't have to be in a the theater. Doesn't matter. We'll present the console, have Mark Cerny explain the specs, tell us the new features of the console, controller, 3D audio, all that stuff. Give us examples of the games, both from a first party perspective and a third party perspective. Then continue on with the evolution of PSN, because you have to. You have to improve PSN, right? Would love to hear talk about faster downloads, would love that, right? How the store is faster, more intuitive, right? Those are the things we want to hear. And of course, we would love, we would love for you guys to just tell us, you know, for that ninth generation gaming, is PlayStation 5 the focus? And just tell us. Tell us if it's going to be on PS Now day one. Tell us if it's going to be on PC day one. Or tell us, no. These are PlayStation 5. Tell us if it's all cross-gen. All these games are also going to be on PS4. Let us know. That is what PlayStation fans want to hear. And notice, I'm saying PlayStation fans. Because there are guys who own PlayStation, but they're not really a fan of the brand. They're a fan of another platform, right? And Sony, if you're listening, which I doubt, be careful of which gamers you're listening to. Listen to your core audience, right? Because it's your core audience, right? Delivered that helped deliver the success of your platform. All right. I kind of like that image, you know? That image right there, I think it looks pretty cool, right? For the PlayStation 5, you know? It still has that nice flat 
um, traditional look of a console. Maybe it looks a little bit bigger. One thing, regardless of the design, please, please don't let it sound like a jet engine again. We don't need that. Um, we don't need the console to sound like a jet engine. Please have good cooling so it could be whispered quiet, right? Now, that's main, the main point of the podcast I wanted to dish out. To keep it short, don't worry about when the reveal is. Be more concerned what the reveal will be. How will Sony demonstrate and push the message? That's it, right? Beyond that, I am confident the PlayStation 5 will be possibly the best platform once again for the next generation of gaming, right? And here's my reasons why. This is just my view. Number one, they already have the IPs that people want for next generation. It's already that. People want a Horizon Zero Dawn 2. People want the next God of War. People want the next Spider-Man. Right off the bat, okay? Those are big games that people already want. And that's the importance of creating new IPs for a current gen. Because when you create a new big IP in a current gen, the sequel, or if you already made a sequel, then the third title, give or take, right? is one of the big expected titles that people already want. So it already sells a console. That's what people already want. It's kind of like The Last of Us, right? When Sony released The Last of Us on PlayStation 3, people were just already waiting for the next one on the PlayStation 4, right? Naughty Dog obviously has two major IPs, so they had to push out Uncharted first, and then the, the side story, Lost Legacy. And now, come May, we're about to get possibly the 2020 game of the year, right? And what I like about that is Neil Druckmann going out on Twitter saying that Last of Us 2 is going to redefine AAA. That's him going out there letting everybody know we're making the best game for 2020. And you don't hear a lot of developers challenge that statement. Not even CD Projekt Red, right? No one's really challenging Neil Druckmann's statement of who's going to be the big, you know, the biggest baddest on the block, you know? And while it's just little trash talking, you know, hype, that's what I like to see from Sony, right? With PlayStation 5, I'm sorry. God of War 2? That battle with Thor? Spoiler, right? Horizon Zero Dawn 2? Spider-Man 2? And then Gorilla's rumored new title. Naughty Dog is also rumored to be producing a new IP. There's a lot of crazy stuff that Sony has in their basket. And that right there is already selling me PlayStation. PlayStation 5 is already sold because of the games. But I was still Horizon Dawn, Dawn is going on PC today. Flappy Filipino. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. I honestly don't know what to say about Horizon Zero Dawn going to PC. I just don't know. We, we're we just going to have to wait, you know. Me, personally, though, I'm more focused on the games coming out. We're just going to have to play it by ear, you know. It's, I don't know. <laughs> you know, there's so many people who talked about it, and yet we have nothing there, right? You know. As far as power, right, and I don't know why... To this day, in 2020, people are still falling for that trap of power narrative. It's just really the Xbox community trying to pull you in, right? Xbox community already has a power narrative. They have the Xbox One X, don't they? Do they not have six T-flops of power? They already have it. They have the world's most powerful console. They've been had the world's most powerful console since 2017. We're in 2020. They've been having it for almost three years, right? By the time the consoles come out, they would have the power narrative for three years. What has it accomplished? 
You didn't accomplish anything, right? So as far as power goes, as long as Sony is smart enough to provide the performance their first party of studio needs to create amazing games and to provide the tool sets that third party needs to create games, then that's it. That's all that's going to matter. That's it. The actual numbers is just going to be a talking point. But when these games starts coming out, you know, when we showing, when, when PlayStation is showing God of War 2 and Microsoft wants to publish Sea of Thieves 2 or Disney Land Adventures 2, well, okay, that's your power, but eh, I don't know. You, you might want to look at the games, you know. And I think PlayStation Nation does not care about the so-called better versions of the multiplats, right? Because the multiplats sell best on PlayStation, right? So if it was truly about the best versions, they wouldn't be selling on PlayStation. They will all be selling on Microsoft and PC platforms as the primary highest sales of these games. You know, the games run good, right? The absolute best version ain't a concern as much, okay? That's what I needed to get off my chest. And that's what I needed to push out to the PlayStation community, right? That's what you guys need to remember. It's not the timing. It's the merit and content of the message. And understand that in the end, all this hardware and spec talk has to lead to great games. And the key most important ingredient to great games are the developers. Because it's the developers that produce great games. The hardware and dev kits, that's just the tools, right? But you need the artiste to take those tools and produce compelling, amazing games. And so far, Sony's first-party studios, and even the industry agrees, are some of the best at it, right? And the industry agrees with that, right? They get some of the biggest accolades, Game of the Year awards. It's insane, right? So I'm going to do a little Q&A out here. Got 137 in the chat. Uh, hit the like button. Um, what we got here? Uh, let's see. Do a little Q&A. Let's see what we got, what we got, what we got. Let me scroll down. Chat is wild here. So I got my man Escobar saying Spider-Man's not even being talked about. If it's made, it's going to be like MLB The Show 20. Oh, it's going to go on Xbox. You heard him. Spider-Man 2 is going to Xbox. Already begging for games. Games not even announced, and they're already begging for our games. Just goes to show you. What else we got? Uh. I thought this guy got it backwards. It's always games over everything in gaming. You would think, Sam Ash, great point. You would think that's like normal because you call yourself a gamer. Gamer. So gaming is the core function. Everything outside of the gaming, of the games, like features, you know, even graphics, you know, party chat, you know, all this stuff, all the feature stuff. It's supposed to enhance the gaming experience. But at the end of the day, you got to have the big games that people want to play. What else? Uh, let's see, no game expert. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, Angel, Joe, uh, Angel, is PSI getting revealed next month? I'm getting tired of waiting. Uh, no reveal, no official date for the reveal. But even if I say if it got revealed right now, you're still going to wait because the console don't come out till November. So, you're gonna, so we're all going to wait. Everyone's waiting till the end of the year to actually 
play and use the stuff that's being talked about. Let's see what we got. Should some gamers block? Should Insomniac bring some new life into the legacy title for PS5? Good question. I think if there was one title, Ratchet and Clank, I think a lot of people will rock to that. Besides Ratchet and Clank, I think the next title people probably would like a second chance is Resistance. Um, I'll be honest, I wasn't too fond of Sunset Overdrive. I was like, I played halfway through it and I just got bored. I just, the gameplay wasn't for me. To me, the gameplay felt limited. It felt like a poor man's Infamous, you know? Like they just took one aspect of Infamous, which is the rail riding, and they just made the whole game around that. And it just limited it, in my opinion. And I got bored of it. Um, Soulcom game, I think a lot of people are mentioning that. Cross our fingers, hopefully Gorilla took it over. Um, if PS5 is 9.2 T flops, do you expect Multiplast to suffer on PS5? It's a new start to the gen. 3 T flops isn't as small as 1.8 T flops. I don't think it's going to suffer because I think both of these consoles are fully 4K capable consoles, right? At, you know, possibly at 60 frames, right? So I don't think we're going to have issues with 4K gaming. I think a 9.2 T flop console versus a 12 T flop console I think might come into better textures you know things like that um, better looking graphics overall but I don't think there'll be anything suffering I think you'll still get 4k gaming at solid frame rates you know I think where the big hiccup between the two where it's really gonna come down to it in my opinion is the ray tracing you know because ray tracing is very taxing. Uh, just look up PC ray tracing, enabled, unenabled. And there's video demonstrations where they show a game without ray tracing. And then as soon as they enable ray tracing, it drops the frame rate down. It's a, it's a very taxing capability. So if Sony decided, there's rumors of Sony being a discrete chipset specifically for ray tracing. So that way the GPU doesn't get taxed. But if that's just a rumor that isn't true... And the GPU does the ray tracing hardware level. It is confirmed as hardware. It just hasn't been defined whether it's GPU or the discrete chipset. But if it's with the GPU, ray tracing enabled could tax the GPU. And if there's a performance hit, there could be a scenario where a third party will not enable ray tracing on the PlayStation, on the PS5, to keep, let's say if they want 60 frames, but yet on the Xbox, because it's 12 T-flops, it can handle it Bit better it's enabled on the xbox so those scenarios could happen um that is a possibility that if playstation well we know series x hardware ray tracing at the gpu but with the playstation 5 if it's at the gpu there could be disparities between games that have ray tracing and don't have ray tracing with xbox series x having the advantage that could be a possibility When I say match, it's rare to find Xbox gamers gaming since all they talk about specs. Well, when you think about it, they really don't have a lot of games up until, you know, as far as first party Microsoft games, right? Of course, there's third party, right? But who's going to talk about Madden and, you know, 2K or whatever, right? And the big game like Cyberpunk don't come out till later in the year. So, you know, they don't have a lot of games. They got Ori coming up and then Battletoads, Right. Microsoft Flight Simulator, some down the line. They don't really have a lot of Microsoft games coming out, right? So there's really not much to talk about. And the few games that they do talk about, you know, I think Ori is probably their biggest, right? Let's see. Uh, Vedra says, what's your take on my prediction that Sony will start to market PS5 worldwide in September big time in the manner as you just mentioned? 
I think the reveal is going to the reveal, as I mentioned, is going to happen before June, you know, um, and the only reason why I say that I remember Sony, uh, who said it, Sean Layden, uh, about how June, one of his issues of E3, and he said this last year was that June was too late to market something, you know, to get a product out there, market it. You know, it was, it was a very difficult time to use that as a time to market, right? So I think, and I think that's a company policy. So I, I, I think we're going to get a reveal before June, right? And I think we'll start seeing huge marketing when pre-orders are up. And September is a good window, you know? September, Sony announces pre-orders are up. They start marketing. They do a marketing blitz. That's definitely a good window. What else we got? Um, do you think Sony will talk about building a studio to make games like SoCon? Maybe a new mag. What about MotorStorm? MotorStorm, no. Um, I think MotorStorm is probably definitely on the books. I think out of all the games you mentioned there, it's going to be SoCon. But I don't think they'll build a new studio if they want to do it. Uh, Gorilla hired the devs of Rainbow Six Vegas. Not Vegas. I said Vegas. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege. So the guys who did that... They work for Gorilla now. That's what's funny. A lot of people don't see the moves Sony does. But the Rainbow Six Siege developers are now part of Gorilla. So obviously they're making a multiplayer game. We just don't know what. SoCon will be a great idea because there's already name brand recognition behind the title. So it's already an easy marketing sell. It will be hyped by a lot of people. A lot of people will be nostalgic. You know, and the developers of Rainbow Six Siege, they did a great job with the game. So... That and coupled with the developers who already did Killzone, pulling them together, you know, SoCon could be pretty huge, right? And it could, and it's, and it's a good start for a gen because it's a multiplayer game, right? And everybody could jump on that, right? Could really truly push, you know, multiplayer. Let's see what we got now. Oh, so the coronavirus. I didn't mention that one. There is potential. You worry going back to Crowley with the coronavirus? I think at this point, coronavirus is spreading everywhere. I mean, now there's a lot of cases in Italy, and that's like right next door to Germany, right? So, I mean, we got to do what we got to do. Uh, ultimately, it's just try to... Uh, biggest advice I can give to everybody, a uh, couple of things. Number one, sneeze or cough into a cloth. Not onto your skin, right? Coronavirus spreads and survives on your skin, right? Uh, but if you do it on a cloth, least likely to survive and spread. Preferably, you know, some type of disposable tissue or whatever and throw it away. Carry hand sanitizer, portable hand sanitizers. And if you're in a high public traffic area where you're touching a lot of stuff, escalators, handrails, elevators, elevator busting, break out that hand sanitizer and, you know, um, use it. When you're in the bathroom, you know, wash your hands with warm soap water for at least 20 seconds. Then grab a paper towel and open the door with the paper towel. Don't wash your hands in a public bathroom. Wash your hands and then you go grab the knob. You defeated the purpose, right? You know, little things like that, right? Try to stay away from people that you hear sneezing and coughing, especially those in tight areas like elevators or whatever. Um, that's it. That's the best you can. Um, it's similar to... You know, it's, it's not it's no worse than a flu, um, but the reason why it's a big deal is because so far it's more contagious than a flu, right? So while the flu itself, majority of the people survives the flu, there are people who don't survive the flu, namely young children and senior citizens, very old people, right? The rapid pace of the coronavirus, how it's spreading so fast. Yeah, many of us, like myself, my wife. You know, people our age or whatever, teenagers, young adults with no issues or very little medical issues can survive it easily, right? But the fear is because of the rapid pace of how it's spreading, it will reach younger kids and the older senior citizens faster than the flu does, which means that's where you'll see your deaths. You'll see the deaths between the very young population, the very old population, just because of how fast it spread. Not on the merit that is more dangerous than the flu, it's just the merit that it spreads faster than the flu, which means it can hit 
the target audience that are more suspect susceptible to dying. That's why the the coronavirus is such a concern of how fast it can hit certain people, and then people who are just maybe have some type of serious illness, they also could suffer. And that's why it's a huge concern. It's that it's just spreading very fast. Um, let's see. Um, any more questions? Sony just heard of ray tracing. Ray tracing's been around for years, right? So people saying, so let me let me help cut this rumor. If people are going saying Sony just heard about ray tracing, ray tracing has been around for years, not just in games, but in movies. Do I really need to put two and two together for you guys? Um, let's see what else. Definitely. I'm glad Sony has Mark Cerny. He has a very long history and he's a smart dude. Um, I don't see Sony revealing the price till after E3. It's going to be hard when they're going to reveal the price. Um... As far as uh, I see support gaming says laugh a lot. Why 90 point T flops? Always a narrative and not 13.3 T flops with Xbox. Um, it's always a narrative. This is just a power narrative. So, and what's funny is a lot of these rumors, it's not really the console when it comes to these T flops. They're really talking about the dev kit because it's always about what the dev kit, the, you know, what some unknown developer or an insider that knows the developer, what dev kit they have. The dev kit doesn't mean the console. Usually the dev kit is going to end up more powerful than the console because they need a more powerful dev kit to help debug the game. You know? And the developers haven't even received the finalized dev kits yet from what I've been reading. Um. Let's see. And I think. And I think that's it. Everybody just having conversation. So I'm going to I'm just going to end it right here. Right. I hope you appreciate the conversation. I hope you appreciate the video. I hope you learned something. Right. But as far as for PlayStation Nation goes, we already know what's important. Right. But for now, it's all about the games. And PlayStation 4 is a monster. Two weeks. Neo 2. I'm there. Day one. Oh, but anyway, this is your boy Porter Rock 77 on your way out. Hit the like button. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Stay tuned for more content from me, especially how I update the channel when I get back to California. For the new subscribers and the new people support Super Chat, thank you so much for the support. Everybody, I truly appreciate that you rock out with me. Because uh, like I said, you could have been doing anything else in the world right now. But you're rocking out with me. You're rocking out with the chat. And I hope you enjoy it. All right? This is your boy, Porter Rock 77 I'm about to play some games. And I'm out of here. All right? You all, peace. Enjoy your weekend. And keep it gaming.